Hi, this is Duncan Ferguson. In this presentation, we're going to discuss the definitive diagnosis and treatment of hypothyroidism. And we're going to use our understanding of the physiology of the hypothalamic pituitary and thyroid axis and the pathophysiology of the main cause of hypothyroidism in the dog, that is autoimmune thyroiditis, in order to uh, understand the tests that we're going to choose. So the first thing we want to say is that the thyroid function test should not be interpreted in a clinical vacuum. That means that you should have a clinical suspicion before you proceed with these tests. Uh, and the reason is be, the supportive clinical signs will improve the diagnostic value of the tests that you do choose. Um, the other thing you want to be, a, be able to do is to rule out other conditions or confounding therapies that might be existing in your patient. Uh, and this will, if their presence or absence will influence whether you should wait to test or possibly influence the choice of tests. So in general, think of hypothyroidism as a, a broadly multi-systemic disorder um, influencing many different organs. So it makes a lot of sense to uh, do a complete uh, workup that includes a complete blood count, biochemical screen, and urinalysis. The screening of hypothyroidism without evidence of clinical problems consistent with it will tend to lead you to overdiagnose the condition. So we're going to break down the uh, types of tests that we look at uh, into those that you might use to screen an animal for hypothyroidism uh, and to try to rule it out in a sense, and those that you would use to confirm the test once you have a, an initial sus, uh, suspicious finding. And we're going to rely cons about on many of the uh, observations made by a group back about 15 or 16 years ago um, associated with the Society for Comparative Endocrinology. And this group uh, came up with some recommendations based upon the tests at that time. Many of those tests uh, exist today and have and many of the data uh, have been, if anything, reconfirming the kinds of observations that were made by this group. So before we get started, it's useful to mention some of the acronyms we're going to use here. TT4 is total T4, TTT3 is total T3. FT4D is the free T4, and we're going to include D for dialysis. T4 autoantibodies, T3 autoantibodies, and thyroglobulin autoantibodies are going to be discussed in the context of autoimmune thyroiditis, and TSH is endogenous TSH. Now, everything relies, uh, diagnostic tests rely on our understanding of the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. And the first thing we, we need to realize is this axis is impacted by a variety of neural inputs um, that associate with stress, uh, et cetera, from the central nervous system. But more importantly, we, we need to realize that the hypothalamus regulates the pituitary with the release of thyrotropin releasing hormone, TRH. It's a positive effect, which then stimulates TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, and that then stimulates the secretion of thyroid hormone, the most dominant one being T4 or thyroxin from the thyroid glands. Now, next, what happens is that these thyroid hormone, this T4, can be taken up by tissues and converted locally to an act more active T3, triiodothyronine, or inactivated to reverse T3. And this is an important local regulatory step. We'll talk about this in the context of how this makes diagnostic tests, these diagnostic tests, T3 specifically, less reliable because many of the systemic changes that you might see with T3 can be irrespective of the thyroid condition or not. So then we have binding of uh, plasma binding proteins in the serum, and these are binding the thyroid hormones T4 or T3. We won't right now get into the specific ones um, other than to mention later that th transthyrotin 
um, is one of those that we believe can be changed in an illness. And this binding leads to a free fraction, the free T4, and it's this free T4 and free T3 to some extent that feed it act negatively at the, both the pituitary and the hypothalamus. Uh, and that leads to a servo loop or feedback that regulates primar primarily what we can measure, which is TSH and, of course, T4 and free T4. So the key concept here is that negative feedback is mediated by free T4. And therefore, uh, there is, should be a tight relationship between free T4 and TSH. And indeed, as you can see here, even though it's an exponential relationship, this is the case. And so what we're seeing is that the blue box of the reference range is that what you'd find in a normal uh, euthyroid animal where TSH is relatively low and free T4 is between a certain range. But as soon as free T4 gets below a certain level, TSH rises dramatically. And of course, as free T4 gets too, too high, TSH drops, and that is consistent with hyperthyroidism, for that matter. So this can also be shown as a normal, sort of normalized or, or linearized by taking a logarithm of, free t, of the TSH and showing that it's a linear relationship, negative relationship with free T4. So the next thing we need to discuss is the pathophysiology associated with hypothyroidism in the dog, and the, the dominant cause of these, this condition is autoimmune thyroiditis. You can see the normal thyroid gland on the left and a dog with thyroiditis on the right. And what you see mainly is that lymphos lymphocytes have infiltrated the thyroid gland and it takes about three quarters of the gland to be destroyed before you get a reduction of T4. So this, uh, in this graphic, what I want to show you is this hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis, and you can read on the left what's going on, uh, but basically as you get damage to the glands themselves, that is they're incapable of producing adequate amounts of hormone, then obviously the L means that thyroid hormone itself is low. And this of course leads to the clinical signs that the effect E is low, and the negative feedback, the red dotted line, is also low, and that means that the hypothalamus and the pituitary are try to respond with an elevation of TRH and an elevation of TSH. But the thyroid glands, being that they're failing, don't listen. But the key for our diagnostic test is that we, we tend to have a low thyroid hormone value with hypothyroid, primary hypothyroidism and a high TSH. And the combination of these two is a very uh, specific finding in hypothyroidism, so we should keep that in mind. So a few disclaimers and cautions regarding diagnostic tests for thyroid hormone. Firstly, we don't always get a yes or no answer. Earlier stages of thyroid dysfunction often lead to discordant results, meaning that you might get a low T4 and a not elevated TSH, or an elevated TSH and a not low total T4 or free T4. And we need to be aware that there probably needs to be normal ranges for each breed because we know that certain breeds, particularly the sight hounds, have very low thyroid hormone values but are not at the same time hypothyroid. So this is a normal range issue, normal reference range issue.